One of the most important tools to help any old chap survive the wasteland is a weapon. Typically, your first weapon in many of the Fallout games is a pistol. The first Fallout features a roster of 8 distinct pistols that'll help you dispatch some of the weaker foes in the game. But as newer Fallout games have been released, this original pistol roster has undergone some changes. It's evolved. What were once staples of the franchise have been redesigned and changed. This is the evolution of Fallout pistols. The 10mm pistol. Released in 1997 as mentioned, the inaugural Fallout game featured 8 uniquely distinct pistols that the Vault Dweller could effectively utilize. The first weapon granted to Vault 13 Savior is a staple of the franchise, the 10mm pistol. Small yet mighty, the Colt 6520 10mm pistol, as it was known, was standard issue for the security force of Vault 13. Dealing 5 to 12 damage per shot, the 10mm was a reliable firearm for the early portion of the game. The weapon had a standard range of 25 and could fire 12 times before reloading. Intended to be a self loading revolver, Fallout's 10mm pistol came to be through a miscommunication between artists and writers. The weapon's image shows a revolving cylinder, yet the in-game description mentions using a magazine. The result is a magazine-fed 10mm pistol that has a fancy fidget spinner attached to the side. Still, the 10mm would go on to become one of the franchise's most iconic pistols. The 10mm would make a return in the original's sequel, Fallout 2. As Fallout 2's development began even before the release of Fallout 1, the sequel reused much of the first game's assets and code. This meant that, unlike later installments, the stats on the 10mm between the first and second Fallout remained the same. 5 to 12 damage, 25 range, 12 capacity, so forth. Still, this continuity between the first and second Fallout games would pave the way and provide the inspiration needed for when Bethesda would release their first Fallout game. Released in 2008, Bethesda's Fallout 3 witnessed maybe the biggest shift in the entirety of the franchise. The Fallout franchise transitioned from an isometric turn-based CRPG to a first and third person action RPG. But this wasn't the only change made to the game. To avoid copyright and licensing issues, the real world company names like Colt and H&K would be abandoned. This would mean that the name of the 10mm pistol would officially go from the Colt 6520 to the N99. The franchise's newest installment also confirmed the weapon's certainty as a semi-automatic pistol instead of a revolver. The weapon's useless cylinder would be removed from the model while maintaining the classic aesthetic. But as some things changed, others remained the same. The 10mm pistol would make a return as the protagonist's first acquired firearm, excluding the BB gun of course. And funnily enough, the stats on the 10mm pistol sorta remained the same. Rather than varying damage however, Fallout 3 used a fixed damage scale for their weapons. This meant that rather than doing 5-12 to 12 damage in the first two games, the 10mm pistol now dealt a standard 9 damage per shot. The 12 round capacity would go untouched. Two years later, the franchise's fourth canonical installment would be released, Fallout New Vegas. New Vegas utilized the same engine as Fallout 3, meaning that the jump between the game is somewhat similar to the jump between the first two Fallout games. Things changed, but technology-wise at least, they sort of remained the same. Now, while the 10mm wasn't doled out to the courier right off the jump, it was just as common in New Vegas as it was in any other game. One weird thing to note, New Vegas saw quite a bit of damage creep relative to Fallout 3. If you compare the damage of the weapons that appear in both games, on average, New Vegas's versions do more damage. This applies to the 10mm. Instead of dealing a measly 9 damage per shot, the 10mm in New Vegas dishes 22 damage per shot. This is equaled out thanks to the varying fire rate between the games. 
The 10mm in Fallout 3 fires at nearly twice the rate of New Vegas's version, making the damage per second between the two roughly around 60. But while the damage numbers do change slightly, the 12 capacity would remain the same. Five years later, the franchise would see its second largest shift. Thanks to improving technologies, Fallout 4 would be built on a brand new engine, the Creation Engine. New lighting, rendering, and other systems made Fallout 4 the best looking Fallout to date. With this new and improved look, came a new and improved 10mm pistol. Thanks to the game's extensive weapon modification system, while the base 10mm looks quite a bit different, adding a long barrel turns the weapon into something more familiar. As far as damage goes, like its peers, Fallout 4 has the 10mm on the lower side of the damage spectrum, dealing 18 damage per shot, making it one of the lowest damage weapons in the game. Of course, with weapon mods this can be improved, but it of course falls off as one finds better loot. Three years later, Fallout 76 would be released. Thanks to the game's multiplayer focused experience, damage and level scaling was added. Weapons now had levels, indicating what sort of damage they dealt. And while a level 5 10mm pistol can push a whopping 65 damage per second, there are a couple better options, a few of which we'll get to later. Still, the 10mm remained mostly the same between 4 and 76, the 12 round capacity, and the iconic design. While it may appear to be a measly pistol designed for the early game, the 10mm pistol ends up being one of the franchise's most iconic and most recognizable pistols. Appearing in every canonical installment over 21 years, the 10mm has cemented its place as an all-time great. The 9mm Mauser slash Chinese Pistol Now, while some pistols, like the aforementioned 10mm, have appeared in every Fallout game, others have only popped their heads in for a select few. The 9mm Mauser is one such pistol. The Mauser M slash 96 9mm is an extremely accurate small sidearm that was typically used by members of the military. The Mauser M96 resembles the real life Mauser C96. The two weapons share the box magazine, long and thin barrel, and broom handle style grip. I think it's safe to say that Fallout took some inspirations from the C96. As of 2161, the start of the first Fallout, it is seen as a very rare relic of the old world. As such, there is only a single Mauser in the first Fallout game. It can be found in the possession of Gizmo, the richest man in Junktown. As far as damage stats go, the Mauser is quite poor. It deals 5 to 10 damage, has a range of 22, and a capacity of 7. Kinda pathetic. Now, in Fallout 2, like the 10mm pistol, much of the characteristics are shared between the games. The only real difference is the weapon rarity. While still rare, there are more copies of the Mauser in Fallout 2. One can be found in a footlocker at New Reno Arms, and more can be found during a special encounter. It's a rare gun, just not as rare. Ten years later, with Fallout 3, things with the Mauser stayed mostly the same. Again, like the 10mm, the name had to be changed to avoid copyright issues. You see, back in the 90s and early 2000s, weapons manufacturers didn't really seem to care about their name being used in games. The Call of Duty, for instance. But as the video game market grew, weapons manufacturers started to demand that video game developers buy the license to use the correct names. It's a fair ask, to be honest. Because of this, the Mauser M96 became the Chinese pistol. The Shangxi Type 17 pistol shares a nearly identical appearance to that of the Mauser. Box magazine, long and thin barrel, broom handle grip. And while both the Chinese pistol and Mauser do some pretty trash damage, the other stats on the gun are changed around. The Chinese pistol fires 10mm rounds instead of 9mm, has a capacity of 10 rounds instead of 7, but in the grand scheme of things, both the Mauser and Chinese Pistol look the same and are absolutely giga-trash. 
223 pistol, 556 pistol. The next weapon is an iconic pistol that Bethesda has refused to touch, the 223 pistol. In the first Fallout, the 223 pistol is actually a unique weapon given to the Vault Dweller for helping a farmer with their raider problem. Originally a .223 revolving rifle, the gun was cut down to look more like a pistol. The result? A 5 round, high powered sidearm capable of taking down even the mightiest of foes. The 223 deals 20 to 30 damage and has a range of 30. Now, by the start of Fallout 2, word had spread about a high powered sawed off sidearm. This compelled many post war weapons manufacturers to create their own versions. Now, the 223 was no longer a unique, one of a kind gun. It could be bought from plenty of weapon shops. And while the stats between the two games remain identical, the characteristics of the ammo used was changed. You see, in the first Fallout game, 223 FMJ, the round fired from the 223 pistol, did not have the armor piercing trait. This was changed in Fallout 2, making the 223 from the second Fallout do more damage against armored foes than its previous version. So while the stats of the two guns are the same, Technically, the 223 from Fallout 2 will dish out more damage. While the 223 pistol never became widespread in the eastern wastelands, its popularity did proliferate along the west coast. By 2281, the start of Fallout New Vegas, various modifications had been made to the 223, one of which altered the weapon to accommodate the more powerful 5.56mm round. Thus, the 556 pistol was born. New Vegas's version of the sawed off sidearm kept its powerful stopping power, capable of loading dedicated armor piercing rounds. Relative to other New Vegas pistols, the 556 is a solid intermediate firearm. It's not the strongest pistol, but it's definitely not the weakest either. And its unique variant, that gun, is easily obtained early in the game. It makes for a great sidearm. 14mm pistol, 12.7 pistol, Crusader pistol. Next is another weapon that shares a similar story with the 223 pistol. The Sig Sauer 14mm auto pistol is a large and powerful sidearm. Intended to accept and fire the rare 14mm round, the pistol can be rechambered to fit more common ammo types. The damage of the 14mm pistol equals that of a double barrel shotgun. 12 to 22, but it comes with a longer range, 24, and has a 6 round capacity. It comes in as the second strongest non-energy pistol, with the 223 being the strongest of course. However, the 14mm pistol strength would plummet with the release of Fallout 2. Thanks to changes with ammo types, specifically AP rounds being given a .5 damage modifier, the 14mm pistol effectively had its damage cut in half, making it deal a measly 6 to 11 damage, just slightly more than the Mauser. The 14mm pistol went from competing with the best to competing with the worst. Though, with the release of New Vegas 12 years later, the Sig Sauer 14mm auto pistol would be given a new life. The pistol would be now known as the 12.7 pistol, firing the namesake 12.7mm round. With a new ammo type came a slightly altered appearance. The gun would no longer be loaded in front of the trigger, rather the magazine would be loaded into the gun's grip. Once again the sidearm would have competitive damage, having the third highest damage per second among all non-energy pistols. The 12.7mm pistol deals 40 damage and has a capacity of 7. Now while some might believe that New Vegas was the last game in which we saw this classic pistol, a slightly altered version was actually released in Fallout 76 in one of the game's seasonal updates. On November 24th, 2020, Steel Dawn added a new weapon called the Crusader Pistol. And while it's not a direct one-to-one -one replica of the 12.7, Fallout 76 developers have noted that its design is inspired by the New Vegas gun. The Crusader pistol doesn't fire 14mm or 12.7mm rounds though, instead it fires the much more common 10mm. 
but this can be modified to fit many other ammo types. The Brotherhood of Steel decorated sidearm is on the stronger side of the pistol damage spectrum, with a level 50 crusader pistol dealing upwards of 150 damage per second. Starting from the Sig Sauer 14mm auto pistol, this sidearm has undergone many changes throughout the years, eventually resulting in a blue pistol that can even fire cryo rounds. Quite the drastic change. 44 Magnum Now we're going back to yet another iconic pistol that featured in just about every Fallout game. Well, excluding the first one that is. The 44 Magnum revolver made its first appearance in the second Fallout game. Described as the most powerful handgun in the world, the 44 has stats to back up such a claim. If using the jacketed hollow point round, the 44 can deal upwards of 36 damage per shot, making it a formidable early to mid game weapon. In addition to its relatively high damage, the 44 has a lower AP cost to use than most weapons, has a capacity of 6, but has a poor range of 15. Highly powerful, you just have to get a bit closer to hit people. In terms of appearance, it's a 44 revolver. What more is there to say? Fallout 3's version of the 44 stayed true to the core principles of a 44 Magnum, that being that it's freaking powerful. The 44 Magnum in Fallout 3 is the strongest non energy pistol in the game, dealing 35 damage per shot. The sidearm has the standard 6 round capacity. New Vegas kept the momentum of the 44 going, with only 5 other non energy pistols having a higher damage per shot than it. And while that may seem like a lot of pistols, please remember that New Vegas has a ton of non-energy pistols. Some years later, Fallout 4 stayed true to the 44 revolver name, making it the highest damage per shot non-energy pistol in the game. A common thread is emerging, eh? It would seem that the 44 is the strongest handgun in the world. And Fallout 76's 44 Magnum again takes the crown as having the highest damage per shot of any non-energy pistol. It's kind of funny that each game since Fallout 2 has always had some monstrous revolver that can dish out a ton of damage, and while the 44 Magnum has spent 20 years in the Fallout franchise, it's probably the only pistol that's been in multiple games without going through some form of a redesign. I mean, it's a 44 Magnum, there's not much else to it. The Gauss Pistol Here's another quick one, as the weapon has only been featured in two games, 22 years apart from each other. First appearing in Fallout 2, the PPK-12 Gauss Pistol is one of the strongest non-energy pistols in the game. With its extended barrel and front-loading magazine, it almost appears to be more of an SMG than a pistol. It uses an electromagnetic field to propel rounds at an alarming speed, capable of punching through almost any armor. The Gauss Pistol deals 22 to 32 damage, has an extraordinary range of 50 hexes and a 12 round capacity. As such, it comes with very little weakness. The only real problem is the scarcity of ammo, as the Gauss pistol uses 2mm electromagnetic cartridges. Still, it's a great firearm. 22 years later, with the release of the Wastelanders update for Fallout 76, came a familiar looking weapon to those who had played the classic games. The Gauss Pistol in 76 shares quite a few similarities with Fallout 2's version. Both are quite powerful, with Fallout 76's Gauss Pistol having the highest damage per shot of all non-energy pistols in the game, and they both fire 2mm ECs. The only real difference is the ammo capacity, as Fallout 76's Gauss Pistol holds an additional 6 rounds, putting its capacity at 18. The inclusion of the Gauss Pistol in Fallout 76 sets a record for the longest time gap between appearances for any pistol in the franchise, 22 years. The Laser Pistol We've finished up with the Ballistics Pistols and are now moving on to the Energy Pistols. The Watts 1000 Laser Pistol is an energy pistol that can be found in both Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. The weapon uses small energy cells to fire a concentrated beam of light at the target. While strong in the earlier portions of the game, the laser pistol tends to fall off with time, 
as late game foes tend to have a higher resistance to laser weapons. Still, the fact that the laser pistol deals 10 to 22 damage with a range of 35 hexes makes it a competitive option when compared with traditional ballistic pistols. Now, with the release of Fallout 3, 10 years later, the laser pistol had undergone a complete redesign. No longer was the standard laser pistol a Watts 1000, but rather it was the AEP-7. As for design inspirations, the only thing that seems to remain the same between the two versions is the weapon's handguard. Aside from that, it would seem that Fallout 3 game designers wanted to make their laser pistol appear much more rugged and less futuristic. Open wires, screws, and warnings can be found on the design while the old Watts 1000 looks a lot more sci-fi. Fallout 3's laser pistol is the weakest energy weapon in the game, emitting 12 damage per shot. Its 30 round capacity is probably the only benefit of using this weapon. Unsurprisingly, New Vegas' laser pistol is no different from Fallout 3, same appearance, and same poor damage. It would be 5 years later in Fallout 4 that the weapon would make its next big leap, thanks to the weapon modification system, laser pistols, and laser rifles for that matter, were no more. Instead, we had a laser gun, with its pistol or rifle denomination being determined by the weapon's grip or stock. This modular nature meant that the laser pistol could look strikingly different from past titles. The notable feature that remained the same between Fallout titles is the rectangular barrel. As far as damage goes, the base laser gun deals 24 damage per shot, making it only really better than the base institute laser gun and the base laser musket. And Fallout 76 kept the same modular style of the laser gun. A slightly revamped design and color scheme is all that is noticeable between Fallout 4 and 76. As far as damage per second goes, Fallout 76's laser gun is on the higher end for pistols. If you haven't already, you'll soon notice a common design trend with these energy pistols. Let's move on in the next one. The Plasma Pistol A step above the laser pistol is the Plasma Pistol. The Glock 86 Plasma Pistol was introduced in the first Fallout game. Powered by a small energy cell, the Plasma Pistol fires a superheated bolt of plasma with the intention of burning a hole through the target. The weapon deals a whopping 15 to 35 damage, making it a formidable sidearm to take into the late game. The only real downside is the range, having one of the shortest pistol ranges at 20 hexes. Its appearance is quite unique, marrying design concepts of grounded, real-world weapons and futuristic sci-fi ones. It's probably my favorite plasma pistol design in the franchise. With Fallout 3, a new version of the plasma pistol was unveiled. Instead of being a Glock 86, what we now had was the Enclave power pistol, as it could only ever be found in the base game being carried by Enclave officers. The plasma pistol did alright damage, pushing a slightly higher damage per second than the laser pistol, but as it had half the capacity, a wider spread, and lower durability, it's not much better than its laser counterpart. In terms of design, the Fallout 3 team really doubled down on the prototype aesthetic. Similar to the laser pistol, the plasma pistol redesign looks a lot more janky than its classic version. Tubes, doohickeys, and gizmos adorn the pistol, giving it a sort of DIY look. With New Vegas, however, while the pistol maintained its rugged look, the stats on it were more akin to the classic games. The plasma pistol once again had a higher DPS than the standard laser pistol. I feel as though I should also note that New Vegas added the Plasma Defender, Another plasma slinging pistol that more so resembles the Glock plasma pistol from the classics. So while Obsidian did stay true to the Enclave plasma pistol look, it would seem that they also added a new plasma pistol as a sort of homage to the classic games. No scope on this one though. And with Fallout 4, the plasma gun got the same treatment as the laser gun a fully modular energy weapon capable of being fitted for any expected encounter. 
With this change, the plasma pistol became a much bulkier weapon to accommodate the plasma rifle's attachments. You can't really fit a fat barrel onto the narrow plasma pistol from the previous games, can ya? A secondary benefit of this change was that the plasma pistol was no longer an eyesore. What was a mess of bits and pieces became an orderly, if not bulky, weapon. Sure, there are still tubes and such, but doesn't it look so much nicer now? In terms of damage, the plasma gun deals a solid amount per shot, 24 ballistic damage and 24 energy damage, totaling 48 damage per shot. Quick maths. Less weight and a comparable ammo capacity to that of the laser gun makes the plasma gun a solid alternative. Still, I don't know what it is, I just find myself hardly ever using plasma weapons in the more recent games. Love using the matter modulator in New Vegas, but can never bring myself to use a plasma gun in Fallout 4. I don't know what it is. And in Fallout 76, plasma guns got the same treatment as Fallout 4. They deal both ballistic and energy damage, and have a higher per shot damage than that of laser guns. Do you see what I mean with the pattern yet? One last pistol to go. The Alien Blaster Finally, we've come to the most powerful pistol in mostly every Fallout game. I've had to qualify a lot of pistols in this video already, stating that some weapons have the highest non-energy damage per shot or per second, or that the plasma guns have the highest per shot damage when compared to the laser guns. But I don't have to qualify these things anymore. This is, on average, the strongest pistol in the games, the Alien Blaster. Found in the alien ship encounter in Fallout 1, the Alien Blaster is of course, of alien origin. It is a wonky looking blaster with an incredibly short range of 10 hexes, but it absolutely evaporates anything on screen, dealing 30 to 90 damage. In Fallout 2, the blaster can be acquired from a special encounter with a trader named Willy, or after completing the Enclave Oil Rig Trap Room puzzle making the weapon quite rare. In Fallout 3 onwards, the Alien Blaster becomes a bit easier to get. If one travels north of the MDPL-13 power station, they will come upon a crashed UFO. Next to the dead pilot's body will be a different looking, but equally powerful, Alien Blaster. Fallout 3's blaster takes on a different ray gun look to that of the classic games. The blaster lacks these satellite dish looking pieces on the barrel, and gone are the handguard and tubes. The blaster deals a whopping 100 damage per shot and always crits, making it the strongest energy pistol in Fallout 3. Blam. In New Vegas, if one has the Wild Wasteland trait and makes their way north of the Horowitz farmstead, one will find three aliens near a floating crashed alien ship. The alien captain is armed with the blaster. Like Fallout 3's blaster, the New Vegas alien blaster deals a mighty amount of damage. While per shot it's 25 less, dealing 75 damage, it again will always critically strike, one-shotting just about anything in your way. Like the other energy pistols in Fallout, the alien blaster underwent yet another design change with the release of Fallout 4. Found on a dying alien in a cave, the Alien Blaster from Fallout 4 looks a lot more toy-like than past iterations. Like the change from Fallout 2 to 3, this isn't necessarily bad, it's just different. However, unlike the past 4 games, the Alien Blaster is no cheat code weapon. While it certainly dishes out quite a bit of damage, it's not nearly a one-shot, one-kill kind of gun like in the other games. It deals great damage and is the strongest pistol in the game, but not overly so. On a per shot basis, the 44 revolver competes with it, however DPS wise the alien blaster is uncontested by every other pistol. The alien blaster from Fallout 4 is a rapid fire destroyer of man, not a single shot reaper of death. And again, like all other energy pistols, the Alien Blaster from Fallout 76 shares an identical appearance to that of the Alien Blaster from Fallout 4. Due to the balancing issues that would arise from such a powerful weapon, the Alien Blaster in Fallout 76 is the most neutered version of the weapon to date. 
Its high rate of fire makes it competitive with most other Fallout 76 pistols, but its ammo churning nature and rarity of the alien blaster round ammo make it mostly impractical to use. It's an iconic gun, that's why I guess it's in Fallout 76, but in my opinion, there are better options to use. And that wraps up the evolution of Fallout pistols. 26 years ago, the original Fallout game featured a roster of 8 distinct pistols. Today, many of those sidearms have gone on to appear in future titles, sometimes with the same old look and capabilities, and other times with a brand new style and strengths. Thanks for listening. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. Listen, don't let an old codger like me scare you. I'm old and I'm cranky and I haven't had a guest in months. Barney Rook, commander of the Salem Volunteer Militia, at your service. I'm also the quartermaster, sergeant at arms, and scribes for all official meetings. This here is Reba, but you two already met when she saved your life.